Hi folks, in this video I'm going to show you a way to memorize something called the quadratic formula in probably less than 20 seconds. You'll have it memorized, which is pretty cool because uh, sometimes teachers expect you to memorize it. Sometimes they give you it on a test and sometimes they don't. But before we memorize it, um, let's also learn how to use it properly and let's also realize why we need it. So for example, the questions right here, here's one and here's another one. Let's quickly factor this because it says to solve the following, which means find the zeros. And remember the first step when you're uh, finding the zeros, and I have other videos of course on this, but uh, just a quick review. You want to find what numbers, if you're doing this situation, it's factoring a trinomial, what numbers multiply to, to make negative 5, so what numbers multiply to make negative 5 and add up to make negative 4? And you might quickly say, okay, uh, 2 times, no, that wouldn't work, uh, 5 times 1 would make 5. And the reason why we pick that, we know that 5 and 1 can make 4. Now let's stick with our signs here. So we have a negative 5. When we multiply these, we need a negative 5. And when, they, when we add, we want to have negative 4. So if I make the negative 5 here and the, the 1 here, if you multiply these two, it makes negative 5. And if you add these up, you get negative 4. Because negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. We are almost done. It says to solve. Solve the following means find the zeros. And the zeros are, if this were a parabola, and if we were doing a quick sketch, the zeros would be at two spots. One would be not at negative 5. It's the opposite of negative 5. It would be at positive 5 right here. And the other one would be not at positive 1, it would be at negative 1. And you can open up Desmos and try and you'll see that you'll get a parabola that cuts through at negative 1 and 5. And the other thing is it will be opening upwards because we can see in front of the x squared here there is no negative sign. So it's going to be opening up positive, upwards. It's going to be happy, feeling positive. So why did we do that question? Well We'll explain in a second. If we were to do the next question here, if you looked over here, um, we've got um, a trinomial. What numbers multiply to make 7 and add to make 4? And then quickly you'll realize, and I, maybe you're already telling me, uh, you cannot multiply two numbers, at least two whole numbers, that will make 7 and add up to make 4. There's, there's just no such thing because 7 is uh, it's called the prime number. It just means only 7 and 1 will make 7. And when you multiply it, and that will not make 4. So in the situation where you're stuck, where you can't go any further, that's where you need something called the quadratic formula. Formula, formula. And there it is. There's the word right there. This formula, what it will do it's going to help you find and solve where the two zeros are. It's going to find these two places right here for this equation right here, for this trinomial or quadratic equation if you want to call it that. And here's how you do it. Now first of all, what is the quadratic formula? Let me quickly introduce it to you. Um, let's use a different color and let's tell a story because we're going to memorize this in 20 seconds or less. You ready? Okay. There once was a negative boy, and the boy could not decide whether to stay or go, stay or go, to a radical party. Well, the boy was square. This is kind of sad. So he decided to stay. He didn't go. And he missed out on four awesome cookies. And the party was over very late at 2 a.m. So you just write 2a there. There's no m. So once again, there was once a negative boy. The boy could not decide whether to stay or go to a radical party. The boy was square. So he missed out on four awesome cookies. And the party was over at 2 a m. Done. <laughs> so if you use this formula, first of all, your equation, your trinomial here, has to be in standard form, okay? Standard form means it's written with the x squared first, then the x, and then the whole number right here. So this first 
um, this first coefficient here would be a, this negative 4 would be b, and c would be the negative 7. So a, b, and c. And that's how you would fill in this quadratic formula. And if you did it properly, you would be able to get the answer, the two zeros that we were looking for. And that's why there's the plus and the minus here. You're going to get two answers when you do this. So let's look at this question once again. And uh, let's quickly do the quadratic formula once again. So it'd be, there once was a negative boy. You couldn't decide whether to stay or go to a radical party. The boy was square. He missed out on four awesome cookies. The party was over at 2 a.m. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fill this in. Remember, this is a, this coefficient here, which is 1. b is going to be negative 4, and c is going to be negative 7. And let's fill this in with the numbers that we have right here, these coefficients and this constant on the end. So here we go. Negative b. Well, we have negative I'm going to put it in brackets. b is negative 4. I wrote it in brackets because we have a negative sign and another negative sign. We have to remember this becomes positive. Okay. Now, you couldn't decide whether to stay or go to a radical party. The boy was square. Well, b again squared. So negative 4 squared. And he missed out on 4 awesome cookies. So a a is 1 in this case, and the C is the cookies, negative 7 right here. And the party was over at 2 a.m., or 2 a. So 2 times, there's still a 1 there. Okay? So when you do this question, let's simplify it so that it looks a little bit easier. Um, 2 negatives make a positive, so we have 4 there. And then what we have here, underneath the radical sign, we have 16, because negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. And minus 4, sorry, negative 4 times 1 times negative 7, if you multiplied that out, you would get positive 28. And all of this would be over 2, because 2 times 1 is just 2. Okay, let's keep simplifying this. You don't have to do all these steps if you don't want to, I'm just showing the steps. Now first of all, 16 plus 28. What you can do if you want, let's move the calculator over here, you get your calculator out and go 16 plus 28, add that up in your head if you like, it's 44. What I'm going to do though is take the square root of 44 so we can start to simplify things here. So I'm taking the square root, I'm going to round it off, I'll round it off to one decimal place just to keep it simple here. Whoops, I think it was 6.6. .6. 6.6, .6, and all of that is over 2. Now, we're going to get two answers. All right, One of the answers will be our using the plus sign, and the other one is the minus sign. So if we do the plus sign first, it would be 4 plus 6.6, .6, all divided by 2. And if we use the minus sign, it would be 4 minus 6.6, .6, all divided by 2. So if we did that, Let's uh, use our trusty calculator. 6.6 .6 plus 4, so 4 plus 6.6 .6 is equal to 10.6, and let's divide that by 2, and you get 5.3. So x is equal to 5.3, or the other option is x could be 4 minus 6.6. .6. Divide that by 2 and you get negative 1.3. Here are the two solved, these are the two zeros that we would get from this equation right up here. Okay, The two spots that the, the parabola would cut through would be at 5.3 and negative 1.3. Just to prove this to you, I already typed this into Desmos and we're gonna look and see what Desmos says. If you look at Desmos, you'll see that the negative 1.3 is right here, and over here is our parabola. The other zero is at 5.3, and those are the two numbers that we just got, 5.3 and negative 1.3. So we're happy because we just found the zeros of a situation that could not be factored nicely. It could not be factored. 
okay? So the quadratic formula comes to the rescue even when you can't factor the thing. You can still come up with what the zeros are, okay? And just to prove that, just to prove it, let's, in this small space here, let's just quickly, using another color, let's use blue, let's use it on this one that we know could be factored, because could you use the quadratic formula on a situation that we already know had nice answers, nice whole number answers. So here we go. There once was a negative boy. I'm going to do it a little bit quicker this time. Well, negative and a negative makes a positive, just like before. And he couldn't decide whether to stay or go to a radical party. The boy was square, so negative 4, negative 4 is 16, minus. Missed out on four awesome cookies. Four awesome, which is A, cookies, which is B, or sorry, C. <laughs> C is for cookie, in case you've watched Sesame Street. That's good enough for me. And over here is 2 times 1. Now let's quickly solve this uh, for plus, what is this all going to be? Well, negative 4 times 1 times negative 5 is 20, and 20 plus 16 is 36. And the cool thing is here, people, 36 is a perfect square. And that's why this answer worked so nicely. So the square root of 36 under here is just 6. And all of that gets divided by 2. So we're almost done now. We can see what this is. There's going to be two answers. 4 plus 6, which is 10, divided by 2, which would be 5. And the other uh, x-intercept, or the other 0, would be 4 minus 6 which is negative 2 divided by 2, you get negative 1. Let's go back to the first page, and here it is, 5, which is here, that's 5, and negative 1 was the other 0 right here. And so the quadratic formula can help you even if you're in a situation where it would work nicely. So if you're on a test and you have tons of time, you can check your answers using the quadratic formula just to make sure you got it. But, I don't know, you probably wouldn't have enough time. I would much rather do it this way. Quick trinomial factoring when possible. And I would only use this when I'm really forced to in a situation like this, okay? So I'll do one more example with you. And this question looks a little tricky, but it underlines the fact that before you do anything, people, you have to first write the equation. See how it's written with an equal sign equals 11? You have to first write it in standard form. Okay, so you start by writing it in standard form. Do you remember what you do with that 11? You want to bring it over here, you want to bring it over to the other guys here. So we're going to subtract 11 from both sides, leaving us with 0 out here. And now we can go ahead and find the zeros. Now, if you're uh, watching my other videos and you've seen decomposition or, fa or factoring with the box method, for complex trinomials, you could do that here. In fact, I think it would work. You would start by factoring out the negative 1, and you would be able to solve this using decomposition or the box method. But let's quickly use the quadratic formula, since that would th that's what this video is about. Okay, do you remember the quadratic formula? Could you push pause right now and say it, and write it down out loud before I do it? Well, I'm going to do it. Um, I will do it right here. There once was a negative boy. He couldn't decide whether to stay or go to a radical party. The boy was square. He missed out on four awesome cookies. The party was over at 2A. Okay, so next we're going to plug in the right variables in the right spot, or the right coefficients in the right spot. Um, whoops. So here we go. Let us look at this one right here. And negative b, there once was a negative boy, so that's negative 16, okay, because that's the b. Stay or go, the boy was square, so 16 squared. He was square, he missed out on 4, awesome. So that's a, which is negative 5, cookies, which is negative 11. C is for cookie, as we said. And the party was over at 2 a.m. And A was, I believe, negative 5. Yes. Okay, people. At this point, 
you can verify if you want, but to speed things up, we have our negative 16 here. We've got our plus or minus. You can verify that if you multiply all this out, 16 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 11, you will end up with 36. All of this will equal 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. Okay, so you can verify that on your calculator. I just wanted to speed things up. On the bottom we have negative 10. So we have two answers. One will be negative 16 plus 6. Okay, so do that on a calculator. Negative 16 plus 6 will give you negative 10 divided by another negative 10. So x will equal negative 1. And the other 0 will be negative 16 minus 6. That's negative 22 divided by negative 10 would give you positive 2.2. And if we were to graph this on Desmos right now and quickly look, we would see that 1 and 2.2 seem to be the two answers we get. Why did it say negative here? Is there a mistake? Negative 16, yes that is a mistake. Negative 16 plus 6 is negative 10 over negative 10, so this should be a positive 1. Maybe you caught me and maybe I hope that didn't throw you because when you yelled out, hey, you've made a mistake, I just couldn't hear you and I apologize. Maybe I was blind with my confidence in this question. No. Maybe I was too scared to hear because of COVID. No, that's not it. It's just that I made a mistake because I do that sometimes. I apologize. So there's how you use the quadratic formula, people. And I hope that helps because it's something that's not too big of a deal and sometimes people just hate the idea of having to memorize this thing. So hopefully that little way of memorizing will also help you and make you happy, okay? Good luck out there in the real world outside of this mathematical universe. <laughs> Take care, bye.